Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another series of our endovascular live cases here from Mount Sinai Hospital in our endovascular division. Uh, today is uh, November 11th, and uh, we welcome you uh, again. Uh, today we have a very uh, interesting case. Uh, operators today we have our Dr. Prakash Krishnan, Dr. Vishal Kupur, and we have a uh, guest um, uh, operator as well from our neurosurgery department, uh, Dr. Jamako. Um, and uh, we look forward to uh, sharing this exciting case with you and all of our exciting case discussion. I'm your moderator, uh, Raman Sharma, along with Dr. Karthik Guja. Good morning. And uh, it, before we take it away, just wanted to remind you that this is, again, a live discussion. Feel free to, co to comment, ask any questions. It will be great to, it'll be great to have a live discussion with everybody um, in real time. And we look forward to also inviting you for our next month's live case on December 15th, uh, right before uh, the Christmas and New Year's holidays. Uh, with that, uh, Dr. Krishnan, I'd like to uh, pass it along to you. Well, well, thank you again, Roman. Um, it's a pleasure to have all of you here. It's a real thrill for me to have a, a, a really dear friend, but more importantly, uh, our, our vice chairman of, uh, of neurosurgery and, and a, the director of our stroke intervention program, Dr. Dr. Jay Mako, who's been kind enough, honestly, Jay, thank you very much for taking so much time from his schedule to spend with us. He's quite busy. And I think this discussion is really gonna be very relevant um, because we're doing a brachiocephalic uh, intervention with a very complicated anatomy, which I think is very important for cardiologists and vascular surgeons to understand yeah. in the sense uh, of how the collaboration with our other specialties is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So with, with that brief introduction of Dr. Mako, I'd like oh. to introduce Dr. Vishal Kapoor, our, our director of endovascular at Mount Sinai Morningside, um, uh, Twinkle Singh, who's right next to me, who's our uh, current endovascular fellow, Ray Lascano, who's our endovascular nurse practitioner, and we have uh, Elizabeth, our endovascular nurse, as well as Damien Cabrera, who's always here. So with, with that, uh, we've got a lot to do today, so I'm going to have Twinkle just go ahead and go over the case, and then we're going to get started with the discussion with Dr. Mako. Twinkle? Can you see the benchmark? Hello, uh, hello everyone. That's a big one so our case today is about an 80-year-old male with past medical history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, atrial fibrillation, was an ex-smoker with COPD, uh, known CAD status post cabbage in 2018, and he has a patent Lima to LAD, a patent SVG to diagonal, and a patent SVG to uh, obtuse marginal, and then recently underwent a PCI to RCA. So, uh, but the patient, uh, despite the PCI to RCA, patient continues to have significant uh, chest pain on minimal exertion and intermittent dizziness. And MPI was done that suggested uh, extensive anterolateral ischemia. Uh, he's currently on aspirin, uh, Lipitor, Carvedilol, Imdur, Colchicine, and Estalopram. His lab, pertinent labs are significant for hemoglobin of 10.2, platelets of 166, creatinine of 1.3, INR of 1.3. Okay, so these are the angiograms from the previous uh, diagnostic uh, that, uh, pictures that we took. As you can see, uh, on the right side, the subclavian, uh, significant subclavian stenosis and the origin of the vertebral artery is also very, very immediate to the uh, plaque burden. Um, that, that's the end of the case. Yeah, so I think we the... stop there. And yeah. then um, what, 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 why don't we just, have, there's a lot to talk about. So we did a CT angio yeah. in these cases, and, and, um, and Dr. Marco can discuss that a little bit. So, so Jay, what we did was we did a CT angio. Mm -hmm. uh, the contralateral vert is non-dominant. Right. Um, this is the dominant vert here. And, um, and the point here is obviously the involvement of the, of the subclavian uh, with the vert. It looks like, Jay, in this view, it's better, betterly defined that, that you can see that the lima is not as involved. There's really a vert involvement more than the mm -hmm. lima. Lima is far enough away for us mm -hmm. to not worry about the lima. But with the dominant vert and the subclavian, I think, I think you know, we, need to, we need to consider on how we can protect the vertebral uh, while, while we do the lima. Well, this is a situation that's potentially fraught with risk. Mm -hmm. um, you have the dominant vertebral artery. Uh, it's immediately adjacent. And the ability to protect that is going to be absolutely crucial. And so I think that's why I'm here. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> no, no, but I think it's also important really to discuss, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the impact of the vert and, and what, it, what, it, what it involves. I mean, the vert, let me go for you, AP, so you can see the wire go up the yeah, arm. Yeah, let me... Uh... Actually, he needs to see the wire. Yeah. I think, Ray, we need to swing this around the camera so Dr. Marco can see the wire. You need me to drop the table, Ray? So there you Give go. Give me a favor. Can yep. you, in a second, can you advance the wire, please? Yeah, yep. sure. Is, 
Any resistance? No, so okay. far, but I want to watch my... There it is. Perfect. So you can see here, what we have is a 7 French up and over. <coughs> a little perfect. We have an 035 wire down. I'll fix it for you. <clears throat> and so that's a 035 glide. And now I'm just bringing a benchmark, okay. which is a, a 071 uh -huh. ID catheter, okay. which will facilitate whatever we need. All uh, right. So, so now at this stage, Jay, for the for the cardiologists and the vascular surgeons, and even the radiologists who don't do neuro work, uh, I mean, in, in terms of um, what the importance of the vert, um, how you, uh, you know, uh, what are the diagnostic tests that you need to do, especially in this case, this kind of uh, case, and and uh, and what what is it that we need to watch out for when we're doing this? Because vertebral stenting uh, is done very rarely, as you do know that. And I'm just curious in your practice, how much of that you do do, and um, and what is the uh, indication? For it. Um, PK, uh, PK, can I ask you something? Contrast, yeah. Can you just go over the diagnostic pictures you, you took today to uh, and the different views together. you took for the subclavian? Yeah, the spider? yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, ready, I, I can show you that uh, what, what, what we did today was basically spider. took a picture of the uh, of the uh, of, of here right here. We did a diagnostic shot from the arm. We already had the arch, which showed us the uh, that that what type of arch it was, which was a type one arch. You could see here that we we used a vert tip catheter to engage, and then we used the 014 wire to cross the lesion in the tortuous subclavian. Then we used the seven French sheath to this go ahead and, and get wire. the seven French sheath mm -hmm. into in, in into the vessel, and the 035 super nope. core across. When we did this picture, black. you can see that the lemur is quite far the away. Black, so uh, to to complicate uh, to reduce the complication <laughs> level of this case, what we decided to do was not to wire the lima. I don't believe the lima will have plaque shift within the lima because it's quite far away. And the, the question is, how do we deal with the vert? So, right. of course, we called in our, our, our expert, Dr. Mako. And so he's here. And, and so what we're planning on doing right now is, uh, is get basically deciding how to protect the vert while we decide to stent, the, stent this. So I've decided uh, to use a 9-0 stent here because it's quite a large lima, um, mm -hmm. a subclavian. Mm -hmm. And and as a as uh, Jay knows this. Uh, we've discussed this on the outside. Our stents in, in the vascular side are quite poor in the sense that there's a lot of balloon overhang. So when you could see that, that in the picture, let me take a show you the better picture here. Mm -hmm. um, in the better picture, you could see that what, what happens is there is a yeah. heavy, okay. heavy plaque burden. Right you see that? Heavy plaque burden. And you can see the vert is very, very dominant. So the question is, what is going to happen if, if, if the balloon overhangs and we dissect the ostium of the vert? So this mm -hmm. is a very real problem in a dominant vert. We know the lemur is far away. We've demonstrated that. We're happy. The, 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 and it's always so important. I was talking to Twinkle earlier. The reason we're treating this patient is for, for anterior ischemia right. with significant coronary disease with a patent lima. So, you know, obviously as cardiologists, uh, we're cardiocentric and we worry about the lima. But the reality here is the, the vertebral is incredibly involved. It's a huge vertebral. Right. It's almost a four or four millimeter vertebral uh, from the from the from the measurement that we did. So so, so I right, think I at this stage, gloves. you know, it's important for us to protect this vert. Okay. So, yeah, so, 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 do, so Dr. Marco has come up with a plan, I get a new and I think he's used this guide. Um, this is a, uh, a neuro guide, uh, a neuro guide, the benchmark guide, uh, in order to get it up there. I'm sure it's a very soft tip neuro guide, and now we're going to decide on, on how yeah, we're going to do. Very you. importantly, ACT uh, anticoagulation is in. ACT is uh, last ACT was 250 <laughs> because of the fact that it's a live case. We went ahead and and, um, and did a did uh, a little bit more. We've given a little bit more uh, um, heparin, and uh, so the ACT will be around 300 or 275 at, at this stage when we're doing this. PK, the lesion yeah. characteristic. You think it's calcified uh, mainly? Uh, I think it's it's calcified, but it's also got a by CT. It's basically plaque uh, with some mm -hmm. calcification. There's no question. There's some calcium here. We are going to have to predilate this, Jay. It looks like. I mean, we could try to direct yep. stent it, but uh, but but again, what what uh, what Dr. Marco and I were discussing on the outside was that you know not to go crazy here. We we want to reduce the gradient from a very high gradient, which we just checked earlier, which was almost mm -hmm. like 80 millimeters or 90 millimeters to zero. It doesn't have to be zero. It can be five or seven. Yeah. It's uh, 
and, it's, and, it's, yeah. and it's not going right. to create a lot of anterior ischemia here. So, so the idea would be is protect the vert, don't go too crazy. But again, I, I you know, I think part over? of this is the, the, the characteristics of the vert and, you know, when, when, do you, when do you do vertebral stenting? When do you protect the vert? And I think those are things when Dr. Mako uh, will discuss what he's doing here, we'll, we'll talk about it right after he's, he's ready to go. Absolutely. Okay. So that's exactly what we discussed beforehand is, you know, the, the danger here in our minds um, is really snow plowing, right? They come and they clean the driveway, but in the pro clean the street, but in the process of doing that, do push all the snow right into your uh, right into your driveway. Yeah. And so we don't want to cover up the driveway that is the dominant vertebral artery. So that's what we're that's what we're working on. So we have this 07 floor, one. This is floor, floor right here, right? Right here, Jay. This is floor. Yep, you go ahead. So we've got this 071 access and now what we're going to do okay we're we're clearly out That's there can i put the, that that the torque torque. Mm -hmm. here we go could you put that on the back of that yeah. put the torque right now and so what we're going to do we have a yeah, synchro micro wire which is a typical neuro micro wire it's 14 thousands uh as soon as i get the torque mm -hmm. on, i'm going right to try to do it without the torque yeah. which let me help you right. he's already done it do, i think you're already in yeah. yeah yeah okay okay so i'm going to bring that synchro up the dark part is more flexible so I get to the less dark part to start to straighten the segment out. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now I'm going to bring up a spider. Now the spider filter is what you're using for uh, mm -hmm. these type of... Uh, uh, well, the protection. reason I chose the spider in general for digital protection... Hold on, sir, don't move. In general, I prefer uh, filter wire mm -hmm. because it opposes better to the wall. Mm -hmm. However, when you're crossing a nasty lesion, you need lots of other options. I like to use a dedicated neural wire than just the tip of the filter wire. Got it. And mm -hmm. therefore, I chose the spider for this case. Got it. That's a spider okay. wire. This, this is yeah. the spider. This yeah. is the spider wire. Oh. Yep. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna we're gonna come up here. There we go. Yeah. Right there. Now, which segment of the vert do you land this, uh, the filter when you do this? The straightest segment you can. Yep. Just like karate stenting, right? <laughs> yeah, Same thing. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So we're going to take the. Let, let me just come, come off mm -hmm. roadmap here so we can save that. Twinkle, mm -hmm. save that for us. One second. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So That's now we're off roadmap for you so you can see the filter better. There's the filter. Let me go to let another me view. Quick, yeah. Let me go to yeah. another view for you. There you are. There's the. There it comes. 243, give another thousand, please. Huh? I'm sorry? 2,000 is fine. See the straight segment right there for everybody? Yeah. So, 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 Jay, one of the things that I remember at Auctioner, because the, they did do vertebral stenting there, very, very friable vessel, easily dissected, right? Very easily. Very easily dissected. So, you know, a lot of respect to this. I, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the anatomy of the vertebral in terms of, uh, you know, n the supply to the brain? You know, as cardiologists, sometimes we believe, oh, the carotids are open, uh, so no, you know, we've got one vertebral, let's stand across this. I mean, obviously that's not true. Right. So the, the issue here is, you know, the, uh, the importance of this particular vertebral to this patient uh, being that it's his uh, dominant bird. I think we're good. No, that's, that's correct. It's, it's really, you got to assess the collateral circulation. Um, and so in this gentleman, since this is the dominant vert, we really yep, needed know. to, uh, we really want to protect it mm -hmm. at, at every cost that we can. So you'll see we've come up with some ingenious plans to prevent that. So rather than mm -hmm. let the snow cover up the driveway, right. we're going to park the car across the driveway. Exactly, block the snow. <laughs> the question I want to ask you is in terms of, uh, uh, you know, your, your uh, anticoagulation mm -hmm. in Euro, when, when you do do carotid vertebral, are you on heparin or you, do you do anything different uh, than yeah, what we do? Excellent question. Obviously, the patient's on double antiplatelet therapy. Yes. And then at that point, we do full heparinization. Okay. And ACT um, level, what do you guys like? Uh, over 250 is usually a target. You know, Got 250 it. to 350 is fine. Um, to be honest, usually they're relatively straightforward. So you get 5,000 heparin and you're done in like 15 minutes right. before well, it's time to do it, to be. Right. Yeah, typically. Um, but, but things can go wrong quickly. Of course. And being aware of what's going on, getting pictures ahead, making sure there aren't just a lumbali and the rest. Right. So what I would say, so we now have protection. Right. right. I would say whatever you're going to do before, I don't know if you're going to do any separate steps or nope, ready we're ready. I mean, so we let just... me get the balloon. Can I get the, uh, so, so let me just show you three let... by 20 balloon. Maybe you could talk to the audience about what our plan was outside right. that we talked about, uh, you know, in terms of how mm. we're going to do this. Uh, let me just give a little dive. Ready, Vishal? Just yeah. give a little Dr. Marco, first. just a question by the time PK is yep. taking pictures. Uh, um, Karthik here. How are you? There you go. Uh, so, uh, what filter size did we choose here, Dr. Marco? 
I'm sorry. Excellent choice. I chose a five, which is slightly oversized because yeah. I wanted to get great apposition because uh, I want to decrease the likelihood of anything going up. Okay. Now, you'll see the Tortuosity, we're, in some ways, we're lucky. The stenosis Strong, at the yes. vert origin isn't very much, and the tortuosity at the vert origin isn't very much. Mm -hmm. It often yeah. is much more. Okay. Um, and so we've got a nice kind of linearization here. So what our goal is now is we're going to bring up a three millimeter balloon, enough to preserve the opening uh, well. We don't want to overdo it. Mm -hmm. And then, because we certainly don't want to risk dissection. All right. And so we're going to bring a three millimeter balloon up, and we're going to, right before we're ready to treat the subclavian stenosis, we're going to inflate that balloon going from the inside to the outside of the opening of the vert. This way, effectively blocking the ability for us to send stuff up the vert. Got We're it. gonna shut the vert down right. um, while we do this next step to protect ourselves. So the question would be is, uh, now for cardiologists who do a lot of subclavian stenting because mm -hmm. of elema ischemia, what, is that balloon it, coming? It, 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 she, he's getting it. What, which, which vert do we, uh, we, do we choose to protect? Three by 20 uh, coronary balloon. Yeah. I mean, do, do we protect every vert when we do a subclavian stenting or just the ones like this which are involved <laughs> within a, the lesion? It's a great question. Look, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of debate out there in the space, right? Much mm -hmm. like there is for protection in general. Um, I find that when you're doing subclavian stenting and you want to get a really high quality subclavian stent, you want through and through access anyways. Right. I don't see it as a big, I mean, cardiologists are the, the kings of radial mm -hmm. access. Mm -hmm. So the downside to getting radial access and going up, as long as you're not going to, you can't manhandle the vert. Right. You got to be gentle. But if you can nicely and safely and softly put in a filter mm -hmm. while you're doing it, I say that's just a win. Got it. Uh, what what are the is there, there's obviously a risk of filter dissection, right? You have to worry Absolutely. about that. Absolutely, filter right? dissection. So, for instance, one of the things we've done in preparation here mm -hmm. is I also have a Prowler Select Plus, which is a 21 catheter. Mm -hmm. I have a BMW, mm -hmm. and I have a um, Enterprise stent, which is a neuro mm -hmm. closed cell self-expanding stent. Mm -hmm. So that if we did deal with a dissection, I could try to get the Enterprise up, cross the stenosis. Mm -hmm and deploy this very soft self-expanding neuro stent to repair the dissection. So Got it. I'm prepared to fix a dissection. You, anytime you do something like this, you need to be prepared to also deal with the complication. Right, so, absolutely. And that's why I think it's important to have this discussion. So Jay, uh, what, what I'm, let me tell you our end. I know you're mm -hmm. going to put the 3-0 balloon. We're going to use a 7-0 balloon to pre-dilate this because the level of calcium. Mm -hmm. So you, the peripheral balloons aren't elegant because they're going to have a lot of overhang, as are the stent balloons. Mm -hmm. So when I'm planning on using a 9-0 uh, uh, balloon expandable stent, 8 9 9 self balloon mm -hmm. expandable stent, it's probably an 8-0 and then post-dilated, which is probably yeah. smarter. Yeah. I like and, and I think what we're going to do is I just want to let you know that there will be overhang of the balloon past the stent. So, mm -hmm. so you you are going to see well, that, that should that, be perfect. They should be kissing. Right. You should see the balloon. Like a gel zone. Yep. Got it. Exactly right. Okay. Perfect. Just want you to know that. <laughs> I think uh, the balloon yeah, and PK, so, the balloon so, might actually help you even place the stent and the balloon. So it might give you as a marker. Three. Right. Exactly where the ostium so, is. So, guys, uh, let's get everything ready. I need a 70 by 20 um, uh, uh, balloon, regular balloon. 70 by 2 balloon. I want that prepared. I want to have Dr. Mako have his 3-0 yeah. balloon. There's the 3 20 balloon, Dr. Mako. Perfect. I uh, have a shock and load for you. Set up and, and then perhaps. and then it's so and you, then just put it on is, the this is rapid exchange over rapid, the rapid, rapid exchange. exchange. Yep. So we're going with an over the wire system because we're 035, and and Dr. Mako is going with an 014 for everybody at home. Um, and then what we're going to do here is uh, when Dr. Mako is ready with the balloon, sure we're going to we're going to have our balloon in the guide hey, in, the, in, in the distal in, in, in the distal mm -hmm. subclavian. The have. And then and then Ray and I are going to load that up. So Ray, uh, give me the balloon. Let's load the balloon. Right, on Roman, our end. So what do you think about uh, simultaneous balloon inflation here? You think? Well, I mean, it's this is uh, I mean, the, the plan is, is I think, is, uh, is really elegant in terms of protecting this this uh, vert. You know, anatomically, can, the considerations of uh, know, the balloon overhang from the subclavian device, I think, it really is is understanding the equipment you have. I think is paramount here because if you know if if you were if you're not entirely familiar with your equipment and you weren't entirely aware that there is a pretty significant overhang of the balloons, you may think that you can actually just get away with balloon sending and calling it a day. Uh, but I think knowing your equipment is, is something that is very very important here. Kissing at at this level, I think, is is, is uh, you know, it's uh, not something that we do very often in uh, in our interventional endovascular realm while treating these subclavians. But 
the only question which I have is knowing how fraught the vertebral artery is okay, uh, to dissection, kissing mm -hmm. with this on known it. overhang yes. of the balloon, the balloon is, and, that's a, and a nearly yeah, maybe 0.75 to 0.8 yeah. to 1 ratio of the vertebral balloon. Can you mag up for uh, Dr. Dr. Marco? Marco what, yes. what would you believe to be the risk of dissection of just a, ki of a, of a uh, kissing just balloon? Just a balloon there, yeah. Just a kissing balloon simultaneously. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be doing it if I thought it was too high. So I would, <laughs> I would say I'd put it down in the single digits. Um, okay. You okay. Know, obviously, so, we so don't, I think the... nobody has a thousand patient series of this because this is a very complicated lesion. But I, I it, it, you know, based on experience and and doing a lot of these sorts of things, I feel like we have a pretty good shot of this going very nice. I think the idea yeah. is just to keep that ostium patent by just the... putting an undersized. You need no, I'm just looking for the marker. Yeah, the no. balloon's not across yet. I don't see it in Yeah, there it, it is. So no, that's it why just start, felt like I was getting so It's like, you know how we there do the go. jail there balloon go. technique in stenting yeah, when you can put a torque. balloon yeah. across yeah. the side branch and then okay. yeah. actually so stent into it and keep the patient to the ostium. But, those, yep. but so this this is a very similar technique okay. to that, except right. that guy, in, in the coronary literature, we don't we don't inflate the balloon. Let's take a picture of the coronary. Well, it depends. They don't, but sometimes they've done a lower inflation balloon as well. Picture? Yeah. Inject. So you can see here, Dr. Marco's balloon, where it is. You see it? And and our balloon is in the guide right now. Everybody see that? Yeah. So our balloon but is in the maybe guide. For, maybe for think the audience, think for the you, next, few, yeah. uh, next few steps, you can mag in guy. a little bit. Yeah. You want to mag in even more? Would. Jeez, you guys I want to be able to see the top. So we can, we can do that. <laughs> yeah, he wants to see the up. top yeah. of the filter. So remember, we have to follow right the there. filter. That's good. That's good right there. So now I'm going to rail me somebody in this one. PK, you think this view is good, or you want to go a little bit more quadral to open up that bifurcation? I mean, I can do yeah. cranial. cranial. Cranial may be the best view for this. So this view is yeah, the way you, no, you're in is proposal. Can't see. No, no, can't see. Try, no, we try can't come, see. The... No, come the other. How about you come down under the jaw? Yeah, yeah exactly. Under the jaw I was thinking. Okay. Under the jaw. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking no, quadal uh, if you quadal. come. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yes. Coming, keep coming. Yeah, quadal okay, is probably okay to open up that because more? it's more of a posterior takeoff. Agreed. I just yeah, want to so. make sure we see Dr. Marco's filter as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Right now, the this is a good view. Oh, that looks uh, good. This is good. Let's just do a quick, little, yeah, let's there. just do a quick cine here. Inject. Okay. So uh, you can this see is this. a nice, yeah. So you can see the bird is absolutely involved in the lesion. Yeah. yeah. You can yeah. See it looks that. like the plaque is actually going into the ostium of that. So uh, even now, the bird has a now yeah, Dr. Marco, are we going to inflate so. your balloon or? Yeah, as soon as you're ready. I'm ready. My balloon's right there. Guys, attach this, please. Two end deflators. Actually, we have to wait for another one. Yep. Dr. Marco, is, is there any downside to deploying your, your uh, distal embolization uh, device a little bit more proximally, or distal. do you in, intentionally choose for it to be uh, so distal. As, as distal as you can? So what's uh, nominal? What's nominal? What the three of? Okay. Slower right there. Yep. I think it's he just wanted to choose a straight segment, so he went as high up as possible so that when you push the That's correct. Can, yeah. As high as possible in a straight segment. Coronary guys, yeah. please. Keep stability. Just like the... Okay, good. Right, so yeah, I mean, like a, right. the well, idea is, like you said, what was not nominal? to What was nominal? 12. 12. 12. 12. You know, 10, that's good. Yeah. Okay, we're up. Okay, now I'm going to I'm gonna go forward with this. Rail my wire, please. PK, this is a 7 or 20 balloon. 7 or 20 balloon. I'm just going to go right. That should be, that's too much. Give me a little die, guys, from below. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I don't see the second part of your yeah. balloon. I know. I'm going to walk it back. Sheath. Don't worry. I'm going to walk my sheet back. Is this 20? This is 20. Oh. Wow. Doesn't look like okay. 20. Yeah. Is that okay, Jay, right like there? Yeah. yeah, it looks Go like 40. Up. Go up. Going up. Is it a 20 or a 40? PK, I still don't see the oh, distance. I want a 20, the... guys. That's why it looks 40. Yeah. Jesus. All right, just go up. Go up. Okay. It's okay. Just go up. That's fine. Look. I think it's it's a seven. It's undersized anyway, so it's okay. It's a seven over. Yeah, it's fine. So two. Uh-huh. Three. Still at two. Hold on. Going slow, right? Uh-huh. Three, four, five, six, six. Mm. You got it? Six? Wait, now. Six. Okay. Six is now. It's a nice picture to six. really demonstrate the down. overhang okay. that we have yeah. in our it out slowly. Let it come down. Okay, let's get a stent. Give me a 9 0 stent now. It's at least two millimeter was overlap, right? Uh -huh. yeah. 8 0, I'm sorry, 8 0 stent. Uh -huh. uh, you want to push the guide a little, the, the uh, uh, sheet a little bit in, or with the balloon itself? We're okay, Karthik. Yep, we're yeah. good. We're just going to come off ischemia here for the brain a little bit or whatever. Do no, you I leave it up? up? Okay. Yeah. So he's, he's gone up. He doesn't want the balloon to slip. So. Uh, 29, short. Okay. Okay. One, one, two. Okay, let's, let's take a picture here for me. Yeah. Ready? Give me DSA here. One second, coming up. So in this, in this view, I just want to make sure my lima is okay. 
like I said, we don't want to lose track of the main reason we're doing this, which is the Lima. Right. So I think it's far away. Uh, Lima, okay. is, that's a good thing for this patient. So we are, the Virtual balloon is, head. that's perfect. So actually it's good that the balloon okay. you can show is a clue. All right, get it, get it to us. Another way to see the balloon is occluding yeah. well. Yep. That's a great okay. image. Right? All right, let's okay, go. Okay, get us a stent. Occluding the whole world. Yeah. So, Jay, we're going to have to go a little bit past that balloon. Is that okay with you? Because in order to get the osteum, uh, right? Just be right on it. Okay. We'll, okay. We'll, we'll decide together. Go right to where you can go without going on it. Okay. Okay. You got it. Mm. I know. Just I'll... do it exactly perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, no pressure. pressure. No, no pressure. pressure. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Okay. All right, guys, let's do it together. Yeah. Dr. Kirsten, if you can uh, talk about your stent selection here. Uh, it's a balloon expandable, Dr. Mako. Again, guys, uh, for everybody at home, the discussion with your colleague is so important here. You know, we both decided we're going to undersize the stent. Post dial. Don't move, don't move. Post dial it a little bit. And, and now I'm going to take a it's regular a picture coronaries. Yeah, hold on. If we, uh, not post dial, excuse me. Just land it, reduce the gradient, yeah, cool. preserve the vert and the okay. lima, and then we're be done. Ready, attach, please. Yeah. Get everything ready so we Dr. can Dr. Marco, you're going to keep the balloon inflated throughout the process? No. That yes. was the goal? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the goal. Die, but inject. To minimize the inflation time, certainly. I think it's, it's good. Dr. It Marco? Yep, let's go. I like that. Ready? Go. 11. Flora? 11, go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Come back a smidgen. Oh, it's too late now, Dr. Marco. Right. <laughs> it will be fine. I'm going to come back. Hold on. I'm negative on it now. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think it's uh -huh. fine. Yeah, that's all. still it's come back a little bit now. Uh -huh. Just a smidgen. There it is. Yep, that's yeah. it. Yep, that's I'm it. pulling back. Perfect. Go to 11. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm going. Just let me go slow. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Backward tension is okay, I think. Yeah, I'm doing now, backward tension. Now we're good. So everybody at home, I'm doing backward tension here. Okay. Nice. 11 now. It's okay, a good 11, size, PK. It's very smart thinking. 12. 8 okay. is a good one. Okay, I down. Think. Yeah. Go up again quickly. You can dilate even to even 9, 9.5, so if you have to. I think the balloon... 11. The coronary balloon did well. Down. Yeah. Save that image. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Let's walk this out here. Carefully. Sorry. Hopefully. One second. Uh -huh. I want to make sure it's not. Uh -huh. You want to take a sheet first? Now? Yep, I got my sheet. Don't worry, you walk it, it out. The yeah. vertebral looks okay. like. I got it. Walk it out. Dr. Marco, now at, at oh, this step, when, okay. you when do you okay. feel Fine. safe Perfect. deflating Perfect. your, okay, your balloon? Basically, as soon as they're done with what they're doing right now. And they feel mm. they're in a stable place. Even after the, if, if they do a post dilatation, do you No, also... we're not going to post dilate. No, no, no. I, don't think that, I don't think we're planning. Our plan that. is not to post dilate Raman because. Yeah, we... then it'll defeat the whole purpose. I mean... Let me just take a quick picture, Dr. Mm -hmm. Marco. Yeah. Uh, ready, guys, for a quick picture? Yeah. I'm just going to bleed back. Hold on. Hold on, DSA. Bleed Hold back. Just... Come forward, please, in a second. Come forward. Vishal, okay. how much did you go on your pressure with the 8 uh, 12. DSA is on. Oh, okay. So we got about 8 8 0. Yeah. So we're still on the size, but that should be okay. That's still going to be, that's a yeah. lot of flow. Yep, that's a lot of flow. Okay. okay. We can always check a gradient across PK. Yep. No, no, uh, we're not worried about the gradient here. Yeah, I think you were not going to look that uh, perfect result, but I think the gradient definitely is gone. Because you, the distal yeah, approximately, it looks well opposed. Yeah, you can see across the both benchmark uh, right. sheet and this. No, and this and both the waveforms are matching, then about it. the gradient is gone. He's taking it out now. Okay. Before I come all the way and might have trouble getting back through, let's do a run and see if we have flow. Okay, ready? Uh -huh. DSA? DSA is on. Okay, okay uh, sir, hold your breath for a second. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Beautiful. A little bit really of nice. twist, huh? but, but no issues. There's space behind the stand oh, and the No, it's a double that's overlap. Good open. Yeah. yeah, that's a good opening. There's an overlap from the behind. Exactly. Yeah. Not yeah. The, now what There's I no do there. is I become anal about doing step-by-step -step back outs, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll take the balloon out, leave the wire, give it a few seconds, take another picture. And if that looks good. What about, we'll do you recapture. prep the vessel with nitro? Because, you know, they are so susceptible to spasm. Do you, do you give any vasodilatory uh, medications? If I don't see any to start, then not necessarily. Okay. Um, but I give a lot. I typically give rapamil and chartarily. Okay. And I'm generous with it. So yeah, if no. I did see any, I would certainly give okay. 10 of intraarterial verapamil. Dr. Krishnan, you're okay with that gap be behind the stent and the osteum Absol of that? Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, the idea here was not, uh, Dr. Marco and I were very clear, uh, if you, actually, he was very clear with me. The, the, the point is very simple, is that we wanted to get reduce the gradient, reduce the ischemia, um, and then Which and then not the worry about a perfect the, uh, result. Um, Twinkle has a whole presentation on subclavian okay. standing that we'll go over. Yeah, yeah. sure. Ready, We're ready to do a run, guys? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's, that's good. Looks that's very good. Yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have a little uh, accordioning because yes. the wire is straight. I was just gonna ask you that. When I recapture and come out, that should become a much more normal curve and it'll look more robust even. Right. Okay. So Karthik, what we're gonna do is that's we're gonna okay. IVIS to make sure the proximal stent actually we're gonna post dilate the proximal stent to a ten. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this way there's anchored proximally and forget right. about the distal. Oh, that, well, that's what, that, that's that's what, what I was I'm thinking. gonna do. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna I do. I think that's a smart idea. Leave the filter yep. while that happens. Yep, so exactly. So we're can I yeah. get a 1002 balloon, please? 1020. So Two, I'm just yeah. gonna balloon. Uh, I'm gonna uh, uh, post out of that. So Twinkle, can you go yeah. over the subclavian data while while we do this, and yeah. then Dr. Marco can also talk a little bit about uh, yeah. any the vertebral stenting. I, I talk. I, oh, you do. Good. I He's do here. talk about the subclavian and vertebral. I'm Wonderful. doing subclavian and vertebral. Let's let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Open. Okay. So, um, I made a little presentation about uh, simultaneous, when we have to do simultaneous subclavian and vertebral artery stenosis. So, essentially, uh, prevalence of subclavian artery stenosis is about 2% in general population. Uh, real prevalence of extracranial vertebral artery stenosis is not really known, but in various case series, it has, to, it has uh, been from 7% to 40% um, uh, reported. So, but whenever there is a combination of vertebral and subclavian stenosis, uh, typically symptoms occur mainly due to vertebral basilar insufficiency. So just to go with a little bit about the vertebral artery anatomy there, um, Dr. Moko already went over it, but the first, the V1 segment is uh, from the origin to the C6 vertebra. Then V2 segment is from C6 to C2, and then V3 from C22 at the base of the brain, and then V4 is until uh, from, uh, from C1 until it uh, merges into basilar artery. So 50% of patients with vertebral artery stenosis, they usually present initially with stroke, and 26% can usually present with TIA. And over the course of the next five years, if there is a vertebral artery stenosis, it portends a risk of stroke at 20 to 30 percent. So cu currently, um, we usually intervene in case there is a VA stenosis in patients e either when they have stroke or if there are definite symptoms of vertebral basilar insufficiency. And the symptoms, the typical symptoms of vertebral basilar insufficiency that we see is dizziness, vertigo, can be visual dysfunction, perioral paresthesias. So, but for asymptomatic patients who have vertebral, uh, due to vertebral stenosis, vertebral intervention is still can be considered in these uh, scenarios. If there is a significant unilateral stenosis and it's a dominant vertebral artery, if ipsilateral carotid is also occluded, and if there is a tight stenosis of the contralateral vertebral artery, and, all, and also in cases like these, if there is sub, if you're already doing subclavian artery stenting and the vertebral artery is very, very proximal to the subclavian artery lesion, or if there is already a disease of vertebral artery ostium and there's a risk of compromising vertebral flow, in these certain situations, uh, stenting vertebral artery can be considered. So again, there's a very, very limited data on um, combined subclavian and vertebral artery disease intervention. In one series, uh, they uh, looked at 15 patients who were symptomatic with both subclavian and vertebral artery stenosis, and they underwent simultaneous subclavian and vertebral artery intervention. Uh, Follow-up was done at 1, 6, and 12 months, and uh, uh, at the end of their study, they found that 67% of the patients experienced relief of chronic ischemic symptoms. So the technique, the, they use mainly two techniques to uh, do vertebral artery uh, standing. The first one as a, just as a salvage or ad hoc procedure, where the initial plan was to just do the subclavian artery stenting first. And as you see on the picture C, uh, and if after the subclavian artery stenting, if there is a steno, oh, pinched ostium of the vertebral, the vertebral the uh, artery, then you can go ahead and put a stent in the vertebral artery. And no, no, that's no, what they did in a few of the patients like that. And the secondly, what they used is a simultaneous vertebral and subclavian artery stenting where they dilated both uh, vertebral ostium and subclavian lesion with a KISS balloon. 
simultaneous uh, pre dilating the lesions, then putting uh, stents serially, like first stent in the subclavian and then just a stent in the vertebral. And here they didn't do any final kissing balloon inflation, but the end result Please looked stand, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 but the, the stent was overhanging in the subclavian artery. Um, in this particular series, uh, they were able to achieve a te technical success of 100%, and uh, that was defined as a residual stenosis less than 20%. They did not notice any dissection or uh, mm -hmm. flow impairment, and there were no pro pre uh, peri procedure deaths or strokes or MI or TIA that were noted. Uh, in these 15 patients, they did not use any sort of neuroprotection filter. The concern being that after putting the subclavian artery stent, the retrieving the filter may be difficult. That's what they mentioned. Uh, at the end of the follow-up, there was um, one symptomatic vertebral, one subclavian in ISR, and the two cases of uh, vertebral artery instant occlusion, but asymptomatic. So the conclusion was that simultaneous vertebral and subclavian stenting is, can, can be safe and effective uh, regarding the initial success rate and the long-term patency of the procedure. Uh, in another um, uh, series, they have described mini crush technique as well for in both simultaneous uh, subclavian and vertebral artery stenosis. Um, not going to go over the, the stent, but it was essentially putting the stent in Ready? the first deploying the, the stent in the vertebral artery, then retrieving the filter, and then putting the stent in the subclavian. Uh, so the, I think the important part was retrieving the filter after putting the sideband stent and then recrossing and doing the ca uh, kissing balloon inflation. Right. So uh, restenosis rates, um, again, they're in the vertebral artery stenting, they have been reported uh, in certain cities, reported at yeah. anywhere from 10% to 25 to 43% at a one year. And But also, if we do end up doing bifurcation stenting, uh, risk of restenosis rates that. can be even much higher, as we have seen in the coronaries, but we really don't have any real data. Sure. Liz, um, in, can we put a blood pressure uh, cuff on the left? So, uh, in uh, one particular uh, study published in 2010, uh, 35 patients, they were treated with a non-drug eluting stent and 15 were treated with drug eluting stent. And they found that the sim symptoms, um, they found that the ISR rate with uh, drug eluting stents was much lower compared to the non-drug eluting stent. So, essentially, uh, concluding that if we do have to intervene on vertebral artery, putting a drug eluting stent might be preferable. Uh, again, the data on the distal embolic uh, protection devices uh, in vertebral artery is very limited. In one study in 12, uh, on 12 patients, um, they did notice that when there was no filter protection no, not used, they noticed that uh, there were very new uh, transcranial Doppler signals were noted in almost 50% of the patients, although they were all asymptomatic. In another study also, um, the pre uh, after doing uh, vertebral artery stent stenting, yeah. six out of 16 patients had a total of new 25 lesions in the vertebrobasilar circulation area in the post-stent images. To so, Perfect. in no, conclusion, no, um, so coronary bifurcation techniques like lower. mini crush or simultaneous uh, kissing Please, stents no, or T stenting, oh, they can be extrapolated and okay. they can be adopted to a subclavian and vertebral artery Sir, um, uh, stents as well if we have to do that. And the drug eluting stents are preferred for vertebral artery stent due to high restenosis rates for the bare metal. And the distal pro embolic protection devices uh, should be preferred. Uh, if we are intervening of vertebral artery. Um, thank you. That's, That's a nice uh, That's a presentation. Great yeah. yeah, great presentation, you, Twinkle. Richard. It's it's always thank very you. interesting to, to see our, our bifurcation uh, techniques from the coroners being used in <laughs> di different parts of the, <laughs> of the body. I think exactly. uh, it's hearing about a mini crush technique involving this disoclavian vert is uh, is going to raise a lot of eyebrows. Uh, no, but I definitely want to ask Dr. Mako what he uh, thinks of the mini crush. I mean, it was only one. It was only one uh, case <laughs> okay, that or, they actually that's did good right that. There? Yeah. You know, are uh, you good right there? Uh, a little more if you can. Down or up? That way. Like, oh, like a little more lateral. lateral. Oh, lateral, got it, yeah. got it. Yeah, it's it's my <laughs> obsession and being used to biplane. I can't help it. There we go. That's great. Okay, we can do another, sir. Don't um, move, sir. So a couple don't interesting move your head. things. So first, we we put a cup. We're doing a cup run. So rather than bother. So,
specifically selecting the ver uh, Sir, you're moving your head. Right? Sir, don't move your head. Look straight uh, ahead. So we're inflating don't move the your cuff head. and don't locking move, it move. over blood pressure and then injecting don't some clavian so we get good vertebral perfusion, um, mm. which is what we're doing right now. You can see we have really excellent flow. He should be fine. Head down? Yep. Down with the and, and just, I, I think just, just to clarify that again, uh, I think there is some uh, over speaking. You right now, you're saying that you have a blood pressure cuff on the left arm, and you're injecting from the femoral sheath. Yep, and, and yes, I'm just going to go correct. over the the first That's image, correct. just to show. So uh, Dr. Marco can talk about what we did, and why it's important to check the uh, the uh, the vert. So in my opinion, if you're doing this work, you really need to do a head run at the end. You want to make sure there's no little distal emboli. There's no cutoffs. Now, the, the, the one piece that's missing for us right here is obviously we don't see the right vert, which is atretic. Yep. You can see that there's really no contribution coming to the basal <laughs> there. Um, I believe it ends in the pica down there because you don't see contribution to the right pica or the very bottom left. So yep. that, that's on the CTA. Um, but overall, you see for all the pontine vessels, all the severe cerebral PCAs, the whole they're all wide open and filled. Yep. So that makes, that obviously, that gives us a lot of, of confidence. I don't know if you noticed earlier, but the flow now through the vertebral artery is better than it was before we stented. Mm. Um, without question, there was a delay to it, just like there was a delay to everything past that stenosis. It's now filling quite robustly. Uh, so I think that's a positive. And also, I want everybody to say, so we post-dilated the, the proximal stent with a 10 millimeter balloon. So the distal stent is two millimeter, it's an, it's an eight, but you can see it's off the vert. And me and Dr. Marco talked about the chance of any, God forbid, thrombus or anything like that. And he uh, basically suggested that the patient should be on Plavix and aspirin, which is, again, I think recommended at this stage because he has a bypass, he has all the other things going on with him, coronary stents. I think he bought himself Plavix and aspirin for life at this stage. So we're gonna put him on that. Um, and what we're gonna do offline is, we're going to shoot the Lima to make sure there's no embolus to the heart. There's no ST changes uh, in our EKG, uh, so there's nothing to worry about. The patient is very comfortable, um, and I and I I think you're happy with it. I'm very happy with it. I think it's fantastic. And uh, What's happen PK, is I think you post dilated. Yeah, 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 he I did. Say that. He did approximately with a ten. The uh, that that stent is going to endothelialize. Mm -hmm. It's basically what we've done is we've extended the vert. Mm -hmm. We've created a shelf by which the vert has a separate origin that's ah. that's at the end of the stent, and it's going to come back and go up. You guys see that? Yes, we yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just restructured the origin of the vert. Yeah, I do see it very fine. clearly. It's completely. Doctor Mago, in, in in this scenario, would you have ever considered doing like uh, you know we have like chimney stenting lima, that, that that we can do? Um, yeah. See in some the of the aortic no, valves. The, the problem with that is the, the rate of movement at the at the uh, vert origin to the subclavian, there's such a high rate of re-stenosis um, with vertebral artery or with stents at the vertebral artery origin that honestly, we do try to avoid it. Okay. I, I do it. Mm -hmm. I do it, you know, a handful of times a year for patients that really need it. But it, particularly in a gentleman like this is completely dependent on this. If we've got a great picture, we've got great flowing and we can get that otherwise. But like I said earlier, we got to be prepared to do whatever we need to do. So mm -hmm. if this didn't work and we needed to put additional stents or something else we certainly and we're ready to that. do it but but the, the idea of this mini crush because i think a lot of times cardiologists is empirically treated as a, like a coronary bifurcation mm -hmm. and what we try to teach them is it's not a coronary bifurcation because no. it's not a coronary so the the point here is ra rather than treat it like that do the empiric stuff like you're saying i mean uh, it protect, protect it but stent it only if you need it and yeah. i think that's the thing as far as stents do you use dedicated uh neuro stents for the situation or do you no. have a, a ds like we do we i usually use ds okay uh, um, uh, it, it, there's no, there's no good data on this. I mean, I've reviewed it. I was an editor for the American Stroke Association uh -huh. guidelines on this. There's nothing to really guide us okay. because there's so much movement because it's so much lower mm -hmm. uh, while the distal organ is the brain. And I worry about it. Yes. Uh, I don't think that, I think it's probably better treated with the technology that's been developed for the heart. Got it. D Dr. Marco question. If, if you have, let's say there's some plaque shift into the vertebral, let's say this patient has some restenosis of the ostium of the vertebral, mm -hmm. becomes symptomatic, would you stand, because there's a small yeah. hang of the stent after small. the uh, ostium of the vertebral, would you stand behind the stent or would you go across the stent no, and do it? Behind. Because there's gap behind. Okay, chimney. I would do behind. I'd create a, Perfect. Create a chimney um, pathway. Get, okay. Try to create a normal anatomic thing, right? So what I try right. to do is take the stent, run it right next to the, the subclavian stent, 
and effectively extend the vertebral artery, hope that mm. those two further endothelialize and create something that more approximates normal anatomy. Perfect. Dr. Marco, what, an, another follow-up. Um, <laughs> regarding this, uh, you had mentioned this, uh, you feel, you're confident that there'll be some degree of endothelialization of the shelf sure. that was created behind the mm -hmm. current subclavian stent. In our, you know, in our training you know, as interventionalists, we we're, we're, you know, live like by the, uh, you know, the, the idea that you, know, you need perfect apposition mm -hmm. to prevent any Corner. form of, of, of ISR. This goes a little bit against uh, what, what we typically see. Uh, can you speak to, I guess, like your experience and the, the data you, you see with, uh, with um, stents Perfect. actually uh, endothelializing Perfect. with some degree of uh, malposition? Sure. Well, the, the difference here is at that segment, we're not trying to treat the stenosis Why? necessarily. Well, but I get what you're saying. So if you don't have good wall apposition and you're treating an atherosclerotic Sorry, plaque locally and at that region, you're going to have an issue. But if you've got malapposition in a large vessel like this, this is, you know, I'm trying to think of a good situation where this comes up, possibly like at a torturous carotid where you have a little lip there. Um, we don't see, so that, that happens often, right? You have a torturous carotid, you drop a, a stent, and while it's really good, you've got a couple millimeters at the end where the, the vessel's curving done. and you've okay. got a little lip. Uh, it's not my experience, and I do a lot of carotid stenting, that you're going to get uh, restenosis at that region, right? The mm -hmm. stenosis is specific to the pathology, um, it, it, to the region of the anatomy, right? So if you have a little lip three centimeters above where, or one centimeter above where the carotid disease was, you don't get restenosis at that at the end of that stent. Likewise, in this case, you don't, uh, my experience is you don't restenosis where that lip is. It's a completely different process. I think in the coronaries, I mean, you guys just, you can get stenosis everywhere mm -hmm. in, in the coronaries. <laughs> so, so that becomes more of an issue. But uh, if, you've, if you've got a little lip of stent on what is otherwise normal vessel, or in this case, over an ostium, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. That, that doesn't mean he's guaranteed to never form more plaque and have other sure. problems. But yes. I, I don't think that's going to drive him in the direction of a problem, particularly while he's on double antiplatelets. So, Dr. Michael, mm -hmm. also just to conclude, uh, surveillance-wise, so we agreed on aspirin and Plavix. Uh, you don't use rivaroxaban in these cases. We normally wouldn't for a subclavian stent. Yeah. Um, so, uh, surveillance-wise, we'd get ultrasounds. The mm -hmm. data that she, that she presented shows out to, like, basically two years. And after that, if you have if you're no TLR or no symptoms, you leave them alone. Yeah. So, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, I think that's completely And then we'll fine. have them follow up in your clinic, uh, you know, yeah. for, for a post-visit. Love to. And, uh, and I think that's it. Right. So I think it sounds great. I think we did this guy a real solid today. Well, thank you for your Perfect. time. I really appreciate it. So, thank you. So, Kar Karthik, we're going to thank Dr. Mako yeah. for his time. I know he's yep, super busy. Absolutely. That was and then, fantastic. And, yep. Great and case. then we're, we're just going to sign off here. We'll see you. I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And we will see you guys uh, in December for our December live case. So, again, thank you again, Jay. Thank so, you. so appreciative of everything. Thank you, Dr. Mako. And thank you, everyone. It was a great thank case, you. Dr. Kapoor and Dr. Thank Krishna. Thank you, Dr. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, guys, you'll close up. Yeah, you can just pull the.